So welcome to today's edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning With. And today our with is Dr. Katherine Kennedy. So to get us started, Katherine, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Thanks, Michael. I'm, I'm glad to be here. I am an education consultant and researcher in the area of K-12 online digital blended learning, whatever you want to call it, and uh, have been in the field for a little over 15 years. And in the past, I've served as a professor of instructional technology, as well as eight or so years as director of research at two nonprofit organizations. Cool. Well, of all the colleagues that I have in the research field, you've probably spent more time working directly with teachers in a more diverse setting than anyone else that I know of. So with that in mind, thinking about the fact that we've got a bunch of teachers now that are being thrown into this with very short notice, many of which have no or little background in this, is there any advice or guidance that you would have for those folks? Yes, uh, lots of it, actually, um, and not to overwhelm people, but I do have some pointed guidance um, to provide. Uh, first of all, um, you can locate schools and programs who have been providing online learning for a while already. Uh, a lot of these would be your larger online schools or your smaller, say, charter school type places. Um, so, for example, um, Michigan Virtual, which I used to work for their research institute for a number of years before becoming an education consultant, they have a bunch of family of guides uh, that they go to and that they provide for people like teachers, like students, like parents, like administrators and school board members and mentors that work with students who are doing online classes and really using them as a place for resources that you need um, for this new shift that you're making. Another group that I work with directly is Virtual Learning Academy Charter School in New Hampshire, and they are doing a lot of just-in-time trainings um, with just-in-time quick tips and jump-starting type trainings for teachers and other educators in the field. Uh, Georgia Virtual School is another group that offers uh, teacher training and online teaching. Um, their tool is called Tool, T-O-O-L, so definitely check them out. And then North Carolina Virtual Public School, I know, is offering, again, those just-in-time quick tips because I think a lot of people get into um, some of the forums, and that's one of my other um, comments is, jumping into some of these forums and the Facebook groups and things like that. There's one that I'm part of that's got over 110,000 people in it. And it can be really overwhelming for someone like me in ed tech, let alone somebody who's not used to being in all of those types of places where there's so many things being shared out at one time. I think there's over 5,000 posts a day now in that forum. So it can be really overwhelming. I'm um, just seeing on the right hand side of these forums that are offering um, topic-based uh, topics, um, so categorizing by topics, you can find those in the right-hand side of some of these Facebook groups that have been created so that you can go in and look for your content area, look for things like your grade level or your competency level or whatever topic that you're trying to teach online. Uh, and, and people are really just jumping in and helping each other, which is really exciting to see. I also want to mention that you should start small and start slow. I, I think of the idea of like treating your first week to two weeks of this new online learning adventure as if it were your first two weeks of school and just learning how to connect with your students in different ways. Uh, and also don't feel like you need to know everything going in at once, really just try to learn something new maybe once every couple weeks or something and incorporate something new every couple weeks because we have to think about the fact that it's not only our students and, and our families that we're working with that are in this new adventure. We are also in this new adventure. And so um, making sure that we have that empathy and compassion with ourselves as well as those uh, that we're working with and know that there are going to be mistakes uh, as we you know, make sure that we're modeling for our students and our families that you know, we're gonna make lots of mistakes and it's okay to do so. We're all in this vulnerable 
new learning experience together and um, really just showing your authentic self in that regard. Another thing is setting up a schedule with clear and strict boundaries with your time online. I think about this as a remote worker. I have a set schedule. I start the day at such and such a time, stop the day at such and such a time, and I turn off all of my notifications so that I am no longer connected to my technology. I try to get outside and walk in nature. Um, and then another thing is taking care of yourself. You can't fill from an empty cup. So you have to fill your own cup first so that you can fill the cups of others. And this is something that another line of, of uh, work that I do with wellness for educators is doing yoga, mindfulness, meditation, qigong, whatever it is that you need to do to take care of yourself, make sure that you're doing that so that you can be there fully for the people that you're working with. And we have free classes going on right now at wellnessforeducators.com. So please feel free to jump in there. The other thing that I'd like to say, and this is, I think, the last thing that I wanted to say is to focus less, if possible, on the curriculum. Like I said, you know, treating this first two weeks or so as more of a almost like <laughs> starting school in August or September, whenever you start school, wherever you are in the world, making sure that you are focusing less on the curriculum and more on the transition and how to shift in this new space and establishing ways that can help you support your students and their families. Um, and one of the schools I consult with is Stanford Online High School, and they are offering a series of free resources, tutorials, and weekly webinars about their work specifically on social emotional learning and how it translates into online learning. So Tomohiro Hoshi, who is the head of school there, and Tracy Steele, who's the director of student support, focus on the importance of cultivating a sense of belonging, nurturing relationships, fostering community, enhancing engagement, bolstering safe and caring school climate and culture, developing students' effective time management, and also building students' organizational skills. And I think having these as a foundation, really working on those for the first two weeks, because we are shifting from traditional schools into a space that not everybody is familiar with. And so trying to recreate those sense or that sense of community and culture is going to be really important to for students to feel supported um, as they, you know, as they're in a constantly changing space and just being open to that change and providing those opportunities where we can take the time to reflect together on our experience as well as um, just know that we're in this together and that we're not alone and that everybody is in a place of, of flux. Now, you mentioned earlier about the parent guides that you guys developed when you were at Michigan Virtual. If you think back to those, are there a couple of tips out of those that you would provide to parents now that all of a sudden have students at home and, and they've got to somehow structure the home environment so that they can learn effectively? Yeah, and it's it's the same kind of thinking that we think about with remote working. It's establishing a space that is conducive to learning. Right now, I am actually at my kitchen table. So if that works well for your student, <laughs> then so be it. Um, or if there's like a certain space, maybe they have a nice little office area in their room, or maybe there's another space in, a, in the garage or something, somewhere where they can have space to um, quiet time and depending upon how they're learning, um, you know, if they learn better with things going on around them, then, you know, making sure that they're in a space that's conducive to their learning styles. I think, too, um, the same thing that I mentioned about the teachers is that the students also have to find ways to take care of themselves in this new change. And so parents scaffolding that and also their, their parents' reactions to what's happening is actually going to reflect directly onto their students or their child. So making sure that we're mindful about taking the time to take care of each other, um, whether it be a nourishing meal or time together or, you know, going out for a walk in nature, um, taking care of the animals, having some kind of a structure that kind of 
feels similar to the structure that they might have in their regular school day. Um, you know, here's when you're going to work on your math. Well, here's when you're going to work on your English. Here's when you're going to work on your social studies and science and such. And, and then also having some free time because we need that time to really process what we're learning and to, to again, get into that space of um, reflecting and uh, and having fun. <laughs> Learning is supposed to be fun. So making sure that there is some time for movement and um, getting out all of the energy that they have so that they will be able to to learn uh, in a either, you know, if they do have to sit for a while for a particular um, session with their teachers, just making sure that they have space to do that and also that their energy is well expended to be able to do that. All right, perfect. Well, thank you much, Catherine. Um, this has been another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, in this case, Dr. Catherine Kennedy. Thanks so much, Michael. Happy to be here.